I've been using Cyril for a while and Affinity Photo for a long time. I absolutely adore Affinity Photo for developing images in normal light. And between Affinity Photo and Cyril together, I think I've been able to come up with some decent astrophotography results. Mostly I develop the images in Cyril and then I migrate over to Affinity for noise reduction and fine resolution. Unfortunately, the noise reduction presently available in Cyril is not great. It does everything else beautifully, but the noise reduction is not impressive. Works great for fine objects such as stars, but for hazes such as galactic hazes and nebulae, it, it's pretty destructive. But apart from that, Cyril is very powerful when it comes to astro image developing. So I fully develop the images in Cyril, then go over to Affinity with them and selectively paint in denoising. Once the denoising is done, I selectively paint in sharpening in parts of the image where sharpening really has to occur. Because sharpening effectively increases contrast, which increases noise in the image, which results in counteracting one's efforts at denoising. The process is laborious, to say the least, and I was never entirely happy with the results. Recently, a contact through the Royal Astronomy Society of Canada introduced me to a very powerful image development alternative. Three of them actually, which I want to take a moment to look at here. Now these alternatives are not cheap, but if you want to get the very best out of your images, they are definitely worth your consideration. One is PixInsight. Now Cyril, which is free, is a remarkably good astroimage developing program, but PixInsight is like its bigger brother. You have to buy it, and as I said, the cost is steep, but the results speak for themselves. What you see now is a stacked image of two nights worth of data of the Iris Nebula. No development has been done so far. And here you see the results of developments with both Cyril and Affinity Photo. After hours and hours, this is pretty much the best I can accomplish. I've seen better images of the Iris Nebula with no more data. And I had thought the flaws in this image had something to do with me and a need to increase my skill with Cyril. But then a contact with the Royal Astronomy Society said, hey, why don't you send me the data? Let me see what I can do with it with PixInsights and some plugins. And about half an hour later, he returned this to me. The difference was absolutely stunning. Between Cyril and Affinity, I would spend three to four hours to get a photo really cleaned up and properly polished. The noise mostly removed and every bit of detail brought out of that image that I could manage. And this person had just returned this image to me 30 minutes after sending him the raw data. And the quality of it was, without question, beyond what I could have managed with Cyril and Affinity. Well, my interest was piqued and I immediately popped over to the PixInsight website and downloaded it. Between experience working with Affinity, which is very similar in how it functions to Photoshop, and also working with Cyril, I found the learning curve of PixInsight to be mm, simple. Not hard, not easy, but not difficult either. And within an hour, I had it by and large figured out. PixInsight was able to handle the noise in the raw image a little better, but I noticed in particular that it was able to bring out fainter details than I could manage with Affinity and Cyril. But the secret weapon in the war against noise that was like magic was Noise Exterminator. Ordinary denoising algorithms look for scattered luminance in color pixels. In the process of removing these, they inevitably take away some desired color and luminance pixels as well. And this has a tendency to blur fine detail, especially in astro images. Now in astrophotography, we're working with very dim objects, not a lot of light to begin with, and any loss of detail really hurts. But Noise Exterminator was able to figure out quite effectively what was desired signal versus noise and remove only the noise. In addition, it did not simply remove noise leaving blank or black pixels like uh, the denoising in Affinity and Cyril did. That has a tendency to make gaseous regions of nebulae look pixelated, like sprays of colored dust have been scattered over a dark background, as you see here. Noise Exterminator was able to determine the desired signal, and when it removed undesired signal, it filled in those areas with desired signal, giving nebula and gaseous hazes the fuller look they are supposed to have, but which is lost in the process of capturing those images with digital cameras. I have to say, I have looked at other noise removal plugins, and I haven't honestly found them to do a much better job than what I can accomplish manually with a couple minutes effort. 
But what Noise Exterminator managed to accomplish so easily was truly remarkable. Now, any noise removal, including Noise Exterminator, is going to introduce a little bit of blur into the image. Noise Exterminator does a very good job of not putting blur where you don't want it in areas of obvious strong signal, and that reduces blur in good solid areas of the image. But a little blur will drift in regardless. And the second secret weapon in dealing with this little bit of blur is Blur Exterminator, also by the same maker, RC Astro. Now it's never so much as occurred to me to buy a, a sharpening plugin before. Generally, I can manage that with ordinary images of the world all around us just fine without having to pay for an additional plugin. But Astro images are quite different from those taken here on Earth. Working with far less light presents many almost insurmountable challenges, and no amount of trying to sharpen back the blur seem to yield good results. But applying Blur Exterminator after denoising worked like a charm. Now the secret weapon for both Blur Exterminator and Noise Exterminator is the application of AI. But what makes these tools so successful for astro images is the AI has been trained specifically on astro images. Noise Exterminator and Blur Exterminator are special because they are not trying to be jacks of all trades and function within the images. They are designed specifically for the needs of astro images. How effective are they? Well, I'm going to include a few images that I shot over the last six weeks or so and show you the versions developed with Affinity and Serial to the best of my abilities and compare that to those versions I developed with PixInsight, Noise Exterminator, and Blur Exterminator. You can judge for yourself. Now, I still use Affinity Photo in combination with PixInsight and Noise Exterminator and Blur Exterminator. The ability to work with layers in Affinity Photo allows me to selectively paint out and change different regions if I happen to detect something like dust or streaks that could occur on lenses. Or perhaps there is some artifact of compositing Starless and Star Mask back together that needs to be corrected. It's just easiest to do that with a layering photo editing application like Affinity Photo. But I'm pretty sure that being introduced to PixInsight and the RC Astro plugins Noise Exterminator and Blur Exterminator has changed the way I'm going to develop images pretty much forever. Now, over the last couple of years on websites like Cloudy Nights, I've read about PixInsight. I knew it was out there. And a lot of the commentary stated that it was quite hard to use. And honestly, I didn't find it to be all that hard to use. Its stacking application is really quite straightforward. If you already understand stacking through any of the other stacking applications out there, you're going to figure it out pretty quickly. If you're used to editing images on something like Photoshop or Affinity Photo, it doesn't work with layers, so that takes a little getting used to. At least the layers aren't direct where you have access to them and can move them around and change them, but that's easy to get used to. And if you've already been using something like Cyril to do your editing, I think you'll adjust to PixInsight remarkably easily. Like I said, I think it took me only about an hour to get to the point where I could use PixInsight fairly well. And after editing just five or six images, I felt quite comfortable with it and had found that in that short time, I had developed a familiar workflow. In short, don't be intimidated by PixInsight. It's not as hard as some people say. Now, I don't work for PixInsight or RC Astro, but I'd like to recommend products that I've tried and I believe in. And the makers of these products believe in their own products so much that PixInsight offers a 45-day free trial and RC Astro offers 30-day trials of both their plugins. Well, all their plugins, really. So what have you got to lose? You want to improve your images? Give them a try.